You have installed Home Assistant and already started the setup. However, a few devices are still missing and Zigbee is a great option to begin with Home Assistant and add the first lamps, switches and so on. There are, of course, several ways to get started with this. In this video, I will show you my preferred method for connecting Home Assistant with Zigbee and how to add the first devices, which is basically 2021. More after the intro. Enjoy. First, we need to look at the Zigbee options. There are various USB dongles available for this. For example, this one here, which I believe is the cheapest you can get on Amazon. Then there is the now very, very well-known Combi 2 stick, and of course, also relatively new, the Home Assistant Sky Connect. All of these sticks have one thing in common. They work via USB. You can do this by connecting a USB stick to Home Assistant. A small tip at this point, definitely use a USB extension as the Zigbee signal is relatively sensitive to interference and it is worth using a USB extension. Alternatively, there is this brand new open source version, which I have also presented in a video. The device has Ethernet, making it somewhat less sensitive and also allowing for much more freedom in positioning within the house. It has a relatively large antenna, which means it also has a much wider reception range. So anyone with a large house might consider getting something like this to cover greater distances. Otherwise, these are the USB variants. I will list them all in the description below, so you can decide for yourself which device you want to get. There are thousands of different ways to control everything. Home Assistant now has its own called ZHA. Alternatively, there is also a huge project called Zigbee MQTT. Personally, I would recommend this project to you simply because it provides access to most devices in some way and also offers mapping for many devices that have special configuration options. Zigbee is complicated, but I would definitely stick with Zigbee MQTT. In my opinion, yes, it's relatively easy to set up and supports most devices. If you ever decide not to use Home Assistant anymore, but for example, in Node-RED, you can also directly use the MQTT signals from Zigbee MQTT and write automation with them. So you are really very, very flexible. And accordingly, I will now show you how to set everything up with Home Assistant OS. To do this, we will of course start on the Home Assistant page, which we already set up in the last video. And now we will venture into another tab, specifically the add-on section in the settings. Here we have the opportunity to add more add-ons in the add-on store and we even need to add an add-on that is not available in the add-on store, namely Zigbee MQTT. For this, there is this GitHub repository here. Either click on the link here or copy it from here. I will do that now, and then you go here to the add-on store, click on the three dots at the top, then on repository, and add, add. Now the packages provided by Zigbee MQTT are automatically listed here. You need to reload the page again, and then you will see Home Assistant add-ons here where we can install the regular Zigbee MQTT. In addition to Zigbee MQTT, we also need MQTT, which we do not have yet. We can find that directly in this list. It's best to just go to MQTT at the top here. Then we have the Mosquito Broker, which we can also easily install. Once the installation of these two packages is complete, you will see two gray boxes under Settings and Add-ons. We will start with the Mosquito Broker, as we need it for Zigbee to MQTT. For this, I will click here and then up here on configuration. In the meantime, it's really super simple because we actually don't have to set anything here. Let's quickly check that everything is in order. Looks good. So yes, we actually don't want to change anything or anything like that. We can just go to Watchdog so that if it crashes, the Mosquito Broker will be automatically restarted. And then we can already click on Start here. And if we want, we can take a look at the log to see how everything is being booted up. It takes longer the first time as it is setting up. We will see the successful discovery information here. And that's it. Now everything here has started. I just need to reload it once more to make sure it displays correctly. So now we can get started with Zigbee MQTT. For the MQTT integration, we simply don't need to enter anything here. We just leave it empty. The whole thing configures itself completely on its own. So we will skip that and only need to focus on the serial point. This is the connection to the Zigbee adapter. As you know, we have several options here. If you are going to use a USB adapter now, then let me show you that quickly. You simply connect it via USB, and then you can view all the hardware in the settings under System, Hardware, and you should also see TTYICM here. 
If you click on it, you can already see the ID Dev serial for ID USB Dresden Electronics Combi 2. As mentioned, this can look different depending on the adapter you set up. In my case, it's the Combi 2 stick. I copy this ID here. The advantage is that no matter which USB port it is plugged into, this ID always remains the same. So we copy this, we can exit here, go to Settings, Add-ons, Zigbee MQTT Configuration Serial, and here, we simply paste the copied string after port with a space and then click on save. Now it has automatically added the adapter here and if we were to start everything up now, it would be launched automatically. However, I do not want to use that one now, but rather consciously choose this adapter here, which works via the network. To do this, I click on ZMZA. I don't need the update right now. And then I will copy the Zigbee MQTT configuration from here and I can just paste it here. So save it. And then you will see that everything has been automatically formatted here. I click on information, then on show watchdog in the sidebar, and then on start. And ideally, we should now see Zigbee MQTT starting up here under protocol. It may take a moment depending on the situation. Attention, depending on the configuration you are using, you may also need to check Zigbee to MQTT here again. Depending on the adapter, you will need to insert different configurations. For example, for the Home Assistant Sky Connect, you would need to add this here. For the Combi 2 stick, you need to insert this here. So it's best to just check the list under adapters. In recommended, look for your adapter and see if you need to adjust anything specific. If this appears here, everything has worked and you can click on security here and then you should see this page. And here we can now click on activate pairing directly and we have four minutes to add a new device. I'll go ahead and do that now. So here we have my familiar socket, which has now been added here. I can also rename this directly now. I can rename it to fixed, update the home assistant entity, rename the device. So now we already have a device here. Of course, we don't want to see all of this in SEQMQTT, but rather in home assistant. And since we have ensured that the two can communicate with each other by starting SQMQTT, otherwise SQMQTT would not have started at all. We now just need to establish a connection between the Mosquito Broker and Home Assistant. And for that, we can click on Devices in Settings here and already see a lot of new devices that we definitely should not touch. Because in 2021, the USB adapters are now connected with Zigbee MQTT and therefore should no longer be connected directly to Home Assistant. This is super, super important. Also the Combi 2 stick here, no matter which adapter you use, they must not be configured here at all. So it's best to just click on ignore here so that they disappear from the overview and you don't even get the idea to click on them. However, what we need to press is the MQTT button here next to the subscribe button, specifically on configure. Now, Home Assistant should automatically connect to the MQTT container and we can already see the BQMQTT bridge and the test switch here. We can press finish here to skip this. And if we now press overview right here, then the switch should appear somewhere in this overview. Also, the sequel to the MQTT bridge allows us to enable the permit join button. So we could now activate this pairing process through it. In my case, I can do it this way as well. So I actually don't need that. You see it is turning off here now too. When I turn this on, it should also turn on here. However, we can also see the test switch here and can turn it on and off. The energy tab. And here, statistics are slowly being created about the energy consumption of this socket. So we could now add a lot of devices, switches and so on, and they would be automatically integrated directly into Home Assistant. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If so, I'd appreciate a rating. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. We'll see each other again next week for a new video. Until then, take care and goodbye.